Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben, the man with the wrinkliest shirts on the internet. I'm coming at you this time late at night, so I might look a little weird in terms of color, but I always look weird in terms of color, and the important thing is that I'm here and not wearing pants. I have mixed feelings about the Nostromo. It's a sci-fi legend that helped give birth to an entire fleet of ships that would take humanity to the next frontier, that would expand the horizons of the human dream beyond that of Holy Terra. On the other hand, it's the ship that first made contact with the Xenomorph, the disgusting alien that would go on to end the lives of many of humanity's finest warriors. A moment of silence, please, for those colonial marines whom we lost in the good fight against an evil alien enemy. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm just trying to extend the length of the video. We're here today because I've always wanted to do some videos on the ships from the Alien franchise. And while I spend time catching up on The Expanse so I can do some videos on that, I figured now's a good time. So I was working the other day, and by working I mean I was watching Alien for the 10 millionth time, paying especially close attention to the features of the ship so I could do a video on the ship's best features. Unfortunately, as I was watching, I kind of was like, wait, this ship is kind of not that good. It has its strong points, but in general it reminds me more of a floating space hulk than a competent interstellar ship. So instead, what I want to do today is go through some of the ship's features that I think are lacking. First off, what the hell is the Nostromo? Well, according to the Colonial Marines Technical Manual, it's an M-Class Star Cruiser registered to the Whalen yutani Corporation out of the U.S. state of Panama. Of course, Whalen yutani are the fine folks behind the repeated screwing over of the human race for the sake of their own greed and lustful ambitions for power. But let me get back to this video and finish it quickly before Jeff Bezos kills me. Though an interstellar cruiser, the Nostromo was refitted as a commercial towing vehicle for the purpose of being employed as a commercial hauler, transporting automated ore and oil refineries between Earth and outer colonies of the galaxy. Refitted here means that the ship's original Saturn J3000 engines were replaced with two Rolls-Royce N66 Cyclone thrust tunnels with bipolar vectoring for midline lift function. Not sure how it helps to have mentally ill vectoring, but whatever. Anyway, the ship seemed like it moved really slow, and it was taking forever to get back to Earth. I mean, they're halfway through their journey when they wake up from stasis, and it's still going to be another six weeks in the shuttle for Ripley at the end. And I know what you're going to say here, same thing that everybody says. It's super light, T7A, NLS, tachyon shunt is capable of traveling at 0.42 light years per day, and that sounds pretty fast. But honestly, when we look at the ships in other human fleets, their FTL travel is often instantaneous. And hey, I know that anyone could just simply write a faster ship into the script, and it's better to make a creative ship than to just make a ship that is super fast and invincible. But two points. One, screw you for reminding us that this is in real life. And two, we still have to judge the ship relative to other sci-fi ships, even if other certain franchises just overpower all of their ships, weapons, and technology. Anyway, the point is, the ship isn't that fast, and you should all be writing to Rolls-Royce after this video to tell them to get their shit together because humanity's survival depends on it, those bastards. Now, the Nostromo's in-flight systems were controlled by a central computer called Mother, a 2.1 terabyte processing mainframe which monitored the ship's flight and autonomic functions. There was also a 2.0 terabyte mainframe that served as a backup system should the main system fail. And there was a backup to the backup system that kicked in should both the main and second system fail. Here's the thing, the computer system didn't seem all that comprehensive. It didn't have complete control over the ship as other sci-fi ships often do. Actually, the ship in general seemed pretty antiquated. And for you fourth wall breakers out there, yes, people in 1979 when aliens came out were less evolved than we are today. I believe they were in the homo hippie stage of man's evolution and weren't capable with coming up with as advanced sci-fi ships as modern people, known as homo coronis, can today. Still, I really wasn't that impressed with the ship's computer. I mean, there was a killer alien on board. Maybe help the ship's crew to track the alien and lock it in some part of the ship? Nope, couldn't do that. And yes, a more advanced computer system runs the risk of going all hal on the crew and killing everyone, but when in deep space, you don't want to be left to make do with a ship that is basically just a Mack truck that can fly. No offense to Mack trucks, you keep America running, and I have an odd sexual attraction to Optimus Prime. Anyway, even without going how, all Mother ever seemed to do for the crew of the Nostromo was allow the Whalen yutani Corporation to keep eyes on the ship and throw the humans on board under the bus for the sake of bringing an alien back alive. Remember, people, as the Humanity First Codebook states, there is never a reason to keep an alien alive but to betray the human race. 
Listen to me now, fellow Earthlings. You must never, ever suffer the Xeno to live. That said, when it might afford you pleasure to do so, you may choose to kill it slowly. By the way, the Nostromo was supposed to be capable of interstellar communication as it had long hyperstate antennas for such purposes. And yet, such must not have functioned that well because there seemed to be a lot of good reason to use it when a xenomorph was trying to kill them all. And if I'm remembering correctly, they only tried to use it once and their message went unanswered. Nothing. Keep trying. That said, I suppose the FTL comm system might have just been broken. I mean, nothing on the Nostromo worked that well, and almost all of its technology wasn't very good. It was the 22nd century, and the entire ship basically ran on MS-DOS and binary code. And while this is great for playing the original Doom, it's not so helpful in navigating the blackness of deep space. Speaking of navigation, the ship had all sorts of mapping and tracking software built in, such as ground mapping radar, galaxy-wide mapping, atmospheric element and gas scanning, etc. And all of it seemed pretty antiquated in design and capability. Again, yes, what I'm kind of really saying here is that the people coming up with all of this stuff in the late 1970s when the film came out didn't do a very good job of imagining what computers might look like in the future. I'm not sure they really thought out the future well at all. I mean, the med bays look chic and futuristic. Somehow the color white has that effect. But all is lost when to deal with the mysterious alien creature attached to the patient's face, the tool of choice is a metal clamp. The Nostromo had cameras on its outside that could monitor things going on around the ship, but despite it being the 22nd century, the picture it provided was grainy, and that's when it was working well. Hey, overall, Alien was a terrific and groundbreaking film, so these are relatively small criticisms. And they're not flaws endemic to Alien. I could make similar criticisms of Star Wars. And I think my larger point here is that what makes a sci-fi franchise stand out nowadays is its ability to imagine what technology will evolve to look like in the time in which its story takes place, rather than just imagining how current technology could be used in that time. But I digress. Why did the Nostromo have so many useless buttons and switches? I mean, how the hell is a crew of only seven supposed to be able to know how to operate a ship so complicated? I mean, it's already kind of silly that a crew so small is manning a thousand plus foot ship. But that the ship and its shuttle both have incredibly complicated interfaces makes it only that much more unlikely that so few people could have operated it. I mean, the nearly 6,000 foot long Mercury class Battlestar from Battlestar Galactica, a ship specially designed for being operated by a small crew, still requires about 2,000 people to operate. Scaled down to the Nostromo size of about 1,000 feet, that adds up to still 333 crew members. I didn't just do that in my head, I calculated this uh, beforehand. So I guess there was a lot of extra space on the Nostromo for the seven people aboard. Oh, but of course, its escape shuttle only had room for four people. Okay, just for shits and giggles, let's just pretend that the Nostromo really was designed for only seven people then why make its emergency escape shuttle only able to fit four people? Maybe the fact that the ship was so big and had such a small crew is why much of the ship was so damn dark, too. I mean, why waste energy on lighting the place when no one is ever going to go into certain parts of the ship? But hey, at least the Nostromo took good advantage of its extra space. Yeah, let me just slide forward on this chair that totally needs to be attached to a track so I can see out this lookout window from which I can see nothing. But again, I know that I am making such criticisms of a ship that, when it was devised in the 1970s, didn't have much precedent to go on. And the sci-fi genre was just coming into its own with the advent of special effects technology and CGI and such. I know I'm shitting on the Nostromo here, but there really is something kind of fun about how it feels like an old American muscle car with its tailpipe taped on. Okay, you know what? I am going to try and say something positive about the Nostromo. Hmm. Ah uh, yes, its hypersleep capsules looked very comfortable. There you go. And hey, I do always respect a ship that sacrifices its life for the good of humanity. Even if its self-destruct function was rather draconian, with its allotment of only five minutes to change your mind once activated, and a lack of a remote function. But anyway, I don't want to rip on this ship anymore. That's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did do, please give it a big like. Did what I just say make sense? Grammatical. I don't even know what I just said. What the hell am I saying? Uh, point is, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Definitely comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Nostromo, other ships in the Alien franchise. I uh, hope you're excited for some videos on The Expanse, at least one video. Um, subscribe to our channel.
just do it. Hit that notification bell. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.